wintertime in the Catskills, in the forests. Very peaceful, it's very quiet. Ecologically, this is known as the hibernal season. And of course, the term hibernal suggests hibernation. One would get the opinion that, as you stand in the forest, that almost everything has gone into hibernation or gone into dormancy, that is, inactivity. You hear occasional bird song, maybe you see a, a squirrel or two, but for the most part, things are pretty quiet. Actually, this is a season where most things are dormant. The trees, for example, have gone into almost complete dormancy. As we mentioned when we talked in the fall season, all of the sugars that were made in the leaves during the summer have been transported down the tree, are stored as starch in either the stem, trunk, or the roots, and it remains pretty much in that state all during the winter period. The trees shut down, protect themselves from the extreme cold and the dry season as well. This hemlock next to me looks like it might be capable of photosynthesis. It's certainly green enough, but even in the evergreens, the hemlocks and pines that surround us here in the forest, very little photosynthesis occurs because for the most part, the flow of metabolites to those photosynthetic structures, the needles or leaves, has been pretty much shut off. So they too are remaining fairly dormant. But you have to remember that in the deepest part of winter, in late January and early February, even though it's still very snowy and very cold, the one very important thing is happening, is changing. And that's day length, photoperiodicity. After December 21st, each day gets longer. And these subtle but inexorable changes in day length are already starting to have their effect on the organisms, the plants and animals of the forest, even during this part of winter. It won't be too long, for example, before that sugar that's been stored as starch in the roots of these trees all winter long will start to move up the tree. The sap rising with maples, of course, associated with a maple syrup season. A lot of the animals now are showing some activity as well. Squirrels, for example, will start increasing their activity in later winter, associated with the onset of breeding season. Again, and associated or initiated by photoperiodicity. Do we have any animals that truly hibernate? Actually, very few. There are a few types in the area of chipmunks, for example, that will stay relatively inactive all winter long. But almost all of the animals, whether we're talking about squirrels, small mammals such as deer mice or voles, chipmunks, uh, what have you, all of them do maintain some activity even though during the hardest parts of the winter. Some of the predators are very active during the winter months. Coyotes, foxes are commonly out foraging, looking, looking for prey species to feed on. Probably the most spectacular aspect to winter life, winter animal life, is associated with the birds. The birds are very active during the winter time, and any of you that have bird feeders know that one of the ways you can truly enjoy winter is to feed the wild birds. The birds we have during this winter period, for the most part, are quite different from the birds that are here during the summer. A lot of the birds that we normally think of as summertime birds, the robins, the grackles, red-winged blackbirds, uh, starlings, these birds, a lot of them migrate. They're gone during the, our winter months. They've moved south. But to take their place are a whole variety of birds, many of them that have been here during the summer but now have become more active at the feeders during the winter, and another group that are migrating here from the Northlands, in many cases looking for food. The pine siskins, uh, the crossbills, birds of this nature are actually migratory from the northern areas to our area. A lot of the residents, such as the nuthatches, chickadees, rely very strongly on our uh, ability or, or our practice of feeding them during the winter time. So birds show a great deal of activity. Red-tailed hawks are quite active this time of the year. Uh, some of the 
Great predators from further north are driven into our Mid-Hudson region during this time of the year. For example, a lot of people report seeing bald eagles uh, driven from the north country to around reservoir areas where they're looking for dead fish or carrion, uh, dead deer, other types of uh, uh, meat to feed on. Uh, we also see moving into our area on occasion when things get very bad in the north, the great snowy owl. Owls in general are quite uh, active during the winter months looking for small mammals that are moving about on top of the snow. So there is a good deal of activity in the winter time even though it appears to be relatively dormant around us. Deer you know are quite active. This is a very tough time of the year for all the animals because fall food supplies have been pretty much exhausted and they are now scratching for food. Uh, deer have switched to prefer foods to feeding on hemlock needles or other types of food. So as I mentioned before, it may very seem very peaceful, very quiet and relatively inactive, but there still is a considerable amount of activity that occurs within the forest during the winter months.